What is a credit card? In this video, I will show you the six important things about credit card. And remember to stay with me until the end of the video if you want to know how to calculate OFL. So O is outstanding balance, F is finance charges, and L is late payment charges. And let's start right now. everyone, my name is Shirley and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to improve in your math skills, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Let's take a look at the first important thing about credit card. What is a credit card? Have you seen a real one? Let me show you. So this is a credit card. Okay, it is a thin rectangular slab of plastic which is issued to users by financial institutions such as banks for them to use as payment card to merchants for their goods and services. Credit card imposes a condition whereby the users have to pay back the borrowed money plus interest and also any other additional charges. One of the advantages of using credit card is the immediate use of goods and services, which means that you can get your stuff now and you pay later. This is so convenient for high-valued items such as cars, houses, furniture, or even your monthly groceries. The second advantage is cashless payment. This is so convenient especially when you go shopping or traveling, you don't have to bring so much cash with you. You can just bring along your credit card and together with the goods, you can go to the cashier to make payment using your credit card. Isn't it so convenient? Advantage number three will be, you may use your credit card to make reservations and purchases by phone or internet. For example, you may book a movie ticket using the cinema app, or you may book a hotel room, or you may reserve a flight ticket using the internet. Isn't that convenient? Oh no, I forgot to bring enough money. So what can I do? Okay, this is advantage number four, which is emergency cash. So you can use your credit card to go to any ATM machine to withdraw cash. Isn't it convenient? Advantage number five is credit card facilitate online purchases. Nowadays, a lot of people prefer to buy things online using apps such as Lazada, Shopee, Taobao, or even Amazon. So when you purchase something, you need to check out. So when you check out, they will ask for your credit card information and then an OTP which is one-time PIN will be sent to your mobile phone through SMS. So remember not to reveal your OTP to anyone because that is to verify your purchase. So remember, yeah, stay safe. Advantage number six. Credit card offers reward points to users upon their purchases, which means that card holders may use their accumulated points to redeem for vouchers, for discounts, or even gifts and presents for their family and friends. Isn't that great? Credit card brings disadvantages too. The first disadvantage is overspending. So there are some people who are unable to control their spending habit and tend to buy things which they can't really afford. Okay? So when they can't afford to pay back to the bank, then they'll be highly in debt because they have to pay for the interest and late payment charge. So there's a Chinese proverb which says that if you don't have a big head, you know wear a big hat. Which means that you have to spend within your means. Advantage number two is consumer need more money. Why they need more money? It's because the customers or the consumers will intend to increase their credit limit from the bank and then they will spend even more. So when they spend even more and if they are unable to pay back to the bank, then they will be highly in debt. Disadvantage number three will be future earnings will be reduced. Which means that if I use the credit card for more purchases now, okay, then next month when I pay back to the bank, I will have less cash to spend. Then what's the point? Disadvantage number four would be incurred charges such as annual fees, finance charges, and late payment charges. So credit card users must expect to pay all this, okay, if they are using credit card. If not, might as well just use cash. Disadvantage number five would be some stores do not accept credit card payment. 
Okay, not all stores use credit card payment. For example, like Pasar Malam stores or Morning Market, okay, they only accept cash. So remember, okay, the place that you go to, if they don't accept credit card payment, remember to bring your cash. How to use your credit card wisely? Number one, knowing your own expenses. So everyone should record down what are their expenses every month, okay, so that they do not overspend. Number two, estimate their future expenses. So they have, once they record down, they know that how much they need to pay, okay, for example, for their petrol, for their car services, for their monthly bills, electrical bills, uh, telephone bills, handphone bills, okay, water bills, indoor water bills, okay, and the person have to make sure that they be able to pay back to the bank so that they won't be highly in debt. Number three, do not give your credit card details to anyone, especially to strangers. This is because once they get hold of your credit card details, okay, such as the credit card number, the expiry date, and the three digit behind your credit card, then they'll be able to use it to make purchases via online or at the retail stores. They may also use it to withdraw money from the ATM if you have written down your six digit PIN number behind the credit card. <sighs> so remember, okay, to act smart and use it wisely whereby you don't give your credit card details to anyone at all and keep it at a safe place. Remember, okay? Number four, compare your expenses every month. So if your expenses exceed your maximum capability of paying back the bank, make sure you reduce your expenses in the following months so that you won't be highly in debt as well as you have extra money for savings. Number five, make sure you prepare savings every month. So to avoid interest, make sure that you'll be able to pay back all the expenses during that month in the next statement so that you won't be charged any interest. Number six, check the transactions in your credit card statement every month to make sure that all the transactions are made by you only, okay? So that there's no false transaction or double transactions made. So if there is any, remember to report to the bank immediately. Are you eligible to apply for a credit card? If you want to apply, make sure that you fulfill these three requirements. First one is your minimum income must be at least 24,000 ringgit per year. Number two is the minimum age is 21 years old. Number three is you must be supported by a salary slip or any other supporting documents when you apply. Number one, make sure you're going to trusted websites. Number two, make sure that your mobile phone and computer is free from viruses and hackers. Number three, when you're using computer to make purchases using your credit card, make sure that the web address starts with https colon slash slash and at the right hand corner, there's a padlock symbol. This is to prevent yourself from deceived by fake websites. Number four, when you're using computer to make purchases using your credit card, make sure that you're not using public Wi-Fi. Because if you're using public Wi-Fi, hackers can easily get your credit card information. So be careful, okay? For question one, Naomi received credit card statement for May from Bank A. The May statement shows Naomi has the current amount of 1,000 ringgit that was used to buy a mobile phone. She did not make payment for May. Bank A imposed finance charge 18% annually on the transaction of the mobile phone purchase for 50 days, which is from the entry date to the June statement date. Late payment charge imposed is at a minimum of 10 ringgit or 1% of the outstanding balance. Assume that Naomi did not use the credit card in June. Calculate A, the finance charge and the late payment charge imposed in the June statement, and B, the current amount in the June statement. Okay, to calculate A, the finance charge and the late payment charge imposed in the June statement, I'm going to write down the outstanding balance first. So the outstanding balance is equals to 1,000 ringgit. 
okay and then the period given so here for 50 days means the period is 50 days So to calculate the finance charge, so I'm going to use the outstanding balance, which is one thousand ringgit, times with. So let's look here. So impose finance charge eighteen percent annually. So it'll be eighteen percent annually means per year, three hundred sixty-five days, times with the period fifty days. And the answer is 24 ringgit and 66 cents. So to calculate the late payment charge, so late payment charge. So how much? So late payment charge imposed is at a minimum of 10 ringgit or 1% of the outstanding balance, which means that I'm going to use 1000 ringgit times with 1% and we'll get 10 ringgit. So this is the late payment charge. Okay, now let's solve B. So calculate the current amount in June statement. So to calculate the current amount in June statement, okay, I'm gonna use the OFL, OFL, all add up together. So O stands for outstanding balance. So outstanding balance. F stands for finance charge. So plus finance charge. L stands for late payment charge. So plus late payment charge. So the outstanding balance is 1000 ringgit plus with the finance charge 24 ringgit 66 cents plus late payment charge which is 10 ringgit and then the answer is 1034 ringgit and 66 cents so that's the answer For question 2, Jaden received credit card statement for March from Bank B. March statement shows that Jaden only has one transaction of 2,500 ringgit, which is also the current amount. He only made a minimum payment of 125 ringgit in the interest free period. Bank B imposed finance charge 1.5% per month on his transaction for 18 days and on outstanding balance for 20 days. The late payment charge imposed is at a minimum of 10 ringgit or 1% of the outstanding balance. Assume Jaden did not use the credit card in April. Calculate the current amount which is the outstanding balance in the April statement. To solve this, first of all, I'm going to calculate the outstanding balance. So the outstanding balance will be, so at first, the transaction is 2,500 ringgit and then he paid 125 ringgit during the interest-free period. So it will be 2,500 minus 125. So the balance is 2,375. So the period which is subject to financial charges. So period subject to financial charges okay, on the transaction is 18 days and then the period subject to financial charges on the outstanding balance so on the 
outstanding balance is 20 days okay so now we can calculate the finance charge so to calculate the finance charge I'm going to use 2,500 times with 1.5% because it's 1.5 finance charge is 1.5% per month so 1.5% per month of 30 days times with 18 days so 18 days plus with the outstanding balance which is 2,375 times 1.5% Per month which is 30 days times with 20 days okay so 20 days here and it's equals to 22 ringgit and 50 cents plus with 23 ringgit and 75 cents and the total is 46 ringgit and 25 cents so now we can calculate the current amount in the April statement so current amount in April statement okay is equals to the outstanding balance okay plus with the finance charge Okay, so in this case, there is no late payment charge because he made a payment which is 125 ringgit. So equals to 2,375 plus with the finance charge which is 46 ringgit and 25 cents. And the answer is 2,421 ringgit and 25 cents. Okay, so this is the answer. Well, that's all for now. Are you a pro in credit card already? Let me know in the comments below. If you find this video useful, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my new videos every single week. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you will keep on learning, keep on practicing and keep on watching my videos. And as always, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!